The Calendar Issue From My Elder Joseph the Hesychast By Elder Ephraim of Philotheo and Arizona Background One of the significant accomplishments of Elder Joseph was his correct position regarding the issue of the ecclesiastical calendar. This issue has serious ramifications because one's stance on this issue affects how one relates to the Orthodox Church as a whole, both liturgically and historically. Through the royal decree of January 18, 1923, the government of Greece decided to adopt the new calendar for political reasons. The Church of Greece was allowed to keep the old calendar. A few days later, the ecumenical patriarch issued an encyclical to the churches of Alexandria, Antioch, Cyprus, Greece, and Romania, suggesting that they revise the ecclesiastical calendar. The following year, on March 10, 1924, the Holy Synod of the Church of Greece decided to adopt the new calendar for ecclesiastical use, except for the periods of the Triodion and Pentecostarion, which would continue to be calculated according to the old calendar. This synthesis, along with the liturgical anomalies it created, was called the Revised Julian Calendar, or more commonly, the New Calendar. The churches of Alexandria, Antioch, Romania, and Bulgaria also adopted this new calendar, despite the objections of many of the faithful. Some people were so strongly opposed to this change that they separated themselves from the church authorities that accepted the new calendar. Thus, this innovation created schisms in the church, which have not healed to this day. For eleven years, the old calendarists had no bishop, which left them with an awkward ecclesiastical status, since every church must have a bishop. In 1935, however, the bishop of Florina, Chrysostomos Cavouridis, separated himself from the official Church of Greece and joined the old calendarists. His example was followed by Germanos, the bishop of Demetriados, and Chrysostomos, the bishop of Zakynthos. These three bishops proceeded to consecrate four young bishops, including the monk Matthew Karpathakis from St. Basil's Skeet on Mount Athos. Up until 1937, The old calendarists severely disagreed amongst themselves regarding the status of the new calendar church. Some believed that it was schismatic, and others did not. Their views had not yet crystallized. Bishop Chrysostomos of Florina saw that the majority of the people sided with the old calendar. Therefore, he reasoned that the return of the official church of Greece to the old calendar would just be a matter of time as long as the old calendarists maintained a wise, sober stance of objection while avoiding extremism. Thus, he issued an official encyclical proclaiming his belief that the official Church of Greece was the mother church of the old calendar church, that the old calendar church drew grace from the mother church, and that his position was merely a position of objection. When he proclaimed that the mysteries, i.e. the sacraments, of the new calendar church were valid, the old calendarists immediately separated into two opposing factions, the moderate old calendarists, who followed Bishop Chrysostomos of Florina, and the extreme zealots, who followed Bishop Matthew, who believed that the mysteries of the new calendar church were invalid. There was a great deal of argument, often heated, between the two factions. The zealots especially invoked all kinds of anathemas and curses upon Bishop Chrysostomos. All twenty monasteries on Mount Athos, except one, decided to continue using the old calendar. Footnote. The holy monastery of Vatopedi temporarily accepted the new calendar, but later reverted to following the old calendar. Yet all of them remained in communion with the Patriarch of Constantinople, which had adopted the new calendar. When the controversy over the calendar issue first broke out, the eloquent monk Matthew of St. Basil's Skeet persuaded many of the Athenites in the Skeets, including Elder Joseph, to become zealots, i.e., not to follow the stance of the monasteries of Mount Athos. Elder Joseph even sent a diatribe to Bishop Chrysostomos, 
criticizing his acceptance of the new calendarist mysteries. But since Elder Joseph joined the Zealots out of a genuine zeal for the tradition of the Holy Fathers, he was not fanatical. This is why he was open to God's help. Revelations from God One day in 1937, Papa Bartholomew, an Athenite hieromonk who sided with Bishop Chrysostomos, visited Elder Joseph and wanted to discuss the calendar issue with him. But since Yerinda was a man of peace and prayer, he did not want to discuss it, and he told him, Let's just forget it. We might say some sharp words and get upset. But Papa Bartholomew insisted and began expressing his own opinion about the calendar issue. Then Yerinda answered back sharply and lost his composure, just as he had predicted. When he returned to his cell to rest, he was still in a disturbed state. As soon as he entered his cell, he heard a scratching noise under the planks on which he slept. When he lifted up the planks to see what it was, he saw a demon with horns and a tail. Since Yerinda had abundant grace in his soul, he was not terrified, but justifiably surprised, he asked the demon, What do you think you're doing here? You're the one who invited me in, the demon replied, by saying those things outside to Bartholomew. As soon as he heard this, he was shocked and disappointed. He said to himself, By saying harsh things about the new calendarists, I must have blasphemed against God's church and enabled the demon to enter. Could it be that they are closer to the truth than we are? The demon disappeared after Yerinda made the sign of the cross. Then with many tears he began to pray that the truth would be revealed to him. After praying for a while, he fell asleep. In his sleep, God showed him the following dream, which he related to his brotherhood as follows. I found myself on a small chunk of Mount Athos in the sea, and the waves were threatening it. I wondered how I ended up in such a dangerous situation. Full of fear, I reasoned that since this chunk of rock was shaking and that the waves had already begun to cover it, it wouldn't be long before it would sink, and then I would drown. Nearby, however, I saw the huge Mount Athos, which repulsed every wave coming from the sea. I said to myself, As soon as this chunk of rock gets closer to the mountain, I will jump onto it, and then I won't be afraid anymore. Thus, at the first opportunity, I jumped on to the solid ground of the mountain. Indeed, soon thereafter, the small chunk of rock was swallowed up by the sea, and I said with relief and a sense of security, Glory to thee, O God. And then I woke up. As soon as he woke up, he understood the significance of the dream and began to question the correctness of his stance as a zealot. Furthermore, when Papa Ephraim of Katunakia prayed about the same issue, God informed him with a voice that told him, In the person of the Bishop of Florina, you have rejected the entire church. Likewise, a little while later he heard during prayer a divine voice telling him, You are subject to the Patriarchate, not to the Bishop of Florina. In this manner, they realized that things were not as the old calendarist zealots claimed and that the mysteries of the new calendarists were indeed valid. They decided to beg forgiveness in writing from Bishop Chrysostomos of Florina for the diatribe they had sent him. Yerinda composed a makeshift letter seeking forgiveness, which he and his brotherhood signed. I was not there yet. As did Papa Ephraim of Katunakia and the others in his brotherhood. Father Anthony Kalaitzis of Kafsokalivia, who is going to deliver the letter by hand, wanted to add something to the end of the letter stating, We consider you an Orthodox Church. Everyone else agreed with that addition and signed the new version of the letter. After receiving the letter, Bishop Chrysostomos replied saying that he forgave them. Exactitude with Obedience Papa Ephraim of Katunakia describes what transpired next, which shows how much exactitude true obedience requires. It was a Tuesday, and in the evening I had critical thoughts about Yerinda. In particular, I was thinking about the letter we had sent to the Bishop of Florina, 
and I sort of disagreed with Yaranda. I thought to myself, since we have declared in writing that we will follow Bishop Chrysostomus of Florina, if future circumstances make us follow the monasteries, which are under the ecumenical patriarchate, which is what ended up happening, we will need to revoke our signature that we gave to Bishop Chrysostomus. This is what I was thinking, and I said to myself, we should not have written the letter the way we did, but we should have merely written, Your Eminence, we have made a mistake, and nothing more. The following Saturday, I went to Yerinda in order to serve liturgy. As soon as he saw me, he said, Papa, there is something within you that separates you from me. Don't separate yourself from your elder. Don't separate yourself from me. I had forgotten all about those thoughts of mine since four days had passed. So I said to him, Yerinda, I can't think of any thought I have that would separate me from you. You have something that separates you from me. As soon as I saw you, my soul was enlightened to know that you have some thought that separates us. Yerinda, I can't think of anything. Think, Yerinda replied. So I served liturgy, and in the morning after eating I headed back to my hut. On the way I recollected the previous days, and then it came to me. I realized that the thought about our letter was the thing separating me from Yerinda. I went right back and sought forgiveness with tears from Yerinda, and thus our unity was restored. This is the sign of true obedience, to have blind obedience to one's elder without questioning his decisions. Obedience is not simply executing orders, but genuine spiritual obedience consists in thinking exactly the same way as your elder thinks. The amazing part about this incident besides Elder Joseph's gift of enlightenment, of course, is the fact that, humanly speaking, Papa Ephraim was right and Elder Joseph was wrong, yet Papa Ephraim was the one who needed to be corrected. The Encyclical of 1950 From 1937 onwards, Elder Joseph accepted the validity of both the new and old calendar churches, even though he remained with the old calendarists. This is the stance he had when I joined his brotherhood in 1947. A few years later, however, on March 13, 1950, a new encyclical to their priests was issued, signed by four old calendarist bishops, Chrysostomos of Florina, Germanos of Cyclades, Christopher of Christianopolis, and Polycarp of Dialia. I read the encyclical because Yerinda didn't even want to look at it, even though he was a zealot. Among other things, the following was written. Since the new calendars are schismatics, the mysteries performed by them lack sanctifying grace. Moreover, you must not accept any new calendarist into our holy church, nor be of service to him without his having first stated that he condemns the innovation of the new calendarists and declares their church to be schismatic. As for those who have been baptized by those innovators, they should be anointed with a holy orthodox myrrh, which we have in abundance. When I read this, I shuddered. The author of this encyclical seemed like an executioner to me. The old calendarists repudiated not one or two bishops, but the entire local church of Greece, which had never even momentarily ceased having canonical relations with all the other Orthodox churches. As soon as I finished reading the encyclical, it was night and Yerinda was finishing his vigil. I went to him and told him what it said. That's it. We're leaving. They have made a grave error. This cannot be the truth of God. We must return to the stance of the monasteries. But first we will pray about it, to see what God will tell us. Prayer, my children, prayer, fathers. We must pray that God will reveal to us what to do, so that we do not make a mistake. We will accept whatever God reveals to us. Then he sent Father Athanasios out to go to all the huts of the other zealots and to tell them, Elder Joseph beseeches you to pray hard for him for the next few days so that God will enlighten him to make the right decision about a very serious matter. 
The Revelation Yaranda did not have a university degree in theology. He was, however, taught by God, and as a God-seer he possessed true theology. For as the Holy Fathers say, if you pray truly, you are a theologian. Never in my life did I ever see him take action on something without being enlightened to do so. For this issue of utmost importance, Yerinda made us all fast and pray for three days. For three days we had nothing except a little bit of water. How wonderful those days were with Yerinda! It was so beautiful when Yerinda had us all pray about this issue. On the third and final day, Yerinda remained inside his cell all night praying with tears. We waited outside his cell for him to come out like another Moses and tell us the results of the synod. When he came out, it was evident that he had seen a vision. He said to us, As many as are of the faithful, it's all over, fathers. The revelation clearly indicates that we should follow the stance of the monasteries and that they are on the true path. The zealots are deluded. Resistance This was indeed a great and sudden turn for Yaranda, for until then he was a zealot and a strict one at that. Until then, we were all zealots. Yero Arsenios, Father Joseph the Cypriot, Papa Ephraim of Katunakia, outspoken Elder Nikiforos, and others including myself. Such a sudden change in Elder Joseph was a complete surprise. Since, however, Yerinda was never fanatical and never took sides out of passion, he was open-minded enough to see that this was the orthodox path. A person who is not stubborn and fanatical is open-minded. He is open to seeing his mistakes and accepts correction. Yerinda, what did you see? The fathers asked. I'm not telling you. The revelation is certain, 100%. The issue has been resolved. We will side with the monasteries, and we will commemorate the patriarch. Father Athanasios jumped up and exclaimed, I'm not commemorating the patriarch. He's a heretic. Yera Arsenios said, Yerinda, many people have fallen into delusion, even great saints. Father Arsenios, there are only two roads. Choose whichever one you want. Either be obedient to what I'm saying and stay, or get up and leave. I am siding with the monasteries. But Yerinda, I'm having a hard time accepting it, Father Arsenios replied. Father Arsenios, if that's how you feel, leave. Immediately everyone froze. As soon as Father Arsenios heard that, he said, Evlogison, forgive me. Father Athanasios still raised objections, however. Father Athanasios, Yerinda told him, take your sack and go to the great Lavra and tell them that we submit ourselves to the monastery and to the patriarchate. Go and enroll us, now, and get our identification cards because we are going to be with the monastery. This is God's path. The old calendarists have strayed off the path. Imagine that claiming that the new calendarists are damned and that their mysteries lack grace. Full of disturbing thoughts, Father Athanasio set off for the Lavra with his sack. He was thinking, I wonder, is Yerinda right? Is he wrong? As he was walking, he became tired, and when he sat down to rest, he fell asleep. In his sleep, he saw a vision that convinced him that Yerinda's stance was correct. He then went back to Yaranda and enthusiastically said to him, Yaranda, I will obey you. I will commemorate the patriarch and do anything else you say. What I saw convinced me that it is God's will. What did he see? I don't know. I was young then and didn't ask him. When Father Athanasios told the fathers at the Lavra that Elder Joseph had decided to side with the monasteries, they didn't believe him. They said, How can such a zealous, strict person possibly leave the zealots? Father Athanasios replied, What would you like me to do to prove to you that I am telling the truth? They said, We want to see you receive communion here with us. 
So he stayed overnight and received communion with them the following morning. Then they believed him. Thus we enrolled with the monastery and received our identification cards. Some of the others were disturbed since they were zealots, and they had many things to say to us. Elder Nikiforos shouted at us, but Yeranda would not yield in the least. Even Papa Ephraim of Katunakia told him, Yeranda, be careful. The Holy Fathers have said that even the elect will be led astray in the end times. Papa, if you don't want to serve liturgy for us, leave. Go back to your elder. Since the revelation Yeranda had received was from God, he didn't listen to anyone. As for us youngsters, Father Joseph the Cypriot and I, we had no objection. If Yeranda said yes, we said yes. If Yeranda said no, we said no. It was not an issue for us youngsters. We were not disturbed at all, and we followed Yeranda unconditionally. It was the three older fathers, Father Arsenios, Father Athanasios, and Papa Ephraim of Katunakia, who objected, being somewhat outspoken because of their age. A little while later, Papa Ephraim, my former spiritual father in Volos, visited, and Yerinda asked him, What do you say, Papa? Is that encyclical issued by the Synod correct? He lowered his head and answered, That encyclical should not have been issued. It is not correct. Therefore, my dear Papa, weren't we wrong in siding with the old calendarists? Yes, we were wrong. We were completely wrong, and so we must put things in order. Yerinda's Revelation At first, Yerinda chose not to share the vision with us. After some time had passed, however, he did entrust to us the content of his vision, which he described as follows. While I was praying, I saw a brilliant, beautiful church. It had a small exit on the side, and everyone was coming out of the church. In the courtyard, they were arguing. One person shouted, I am right. Another person shouted, I am more right. And a third person, I am with the true church. This reveals that although they were arguing, they all belong to a single church. They have dogmas in common, and they have grace, but they were arguing because they don't have an open mind and haven't achieved sainthood. So how could I say now that the official church of Greece is heretical and lacks God's grace? Should I call it heretical only because of the calendar? And should I say that their bishops are damned? I am with the old calendar but I think differently from the old calendarists. Indeed, the calendar issue does not affect the salvation of the faithful because it is not a dogmatic issue. There can be differences between local churches in non-dogmatic issues of a liturgical or administrative nature. This does not deprive them of God's grace. After Yerinda received this revelation, he sent Father Athanasios out again to all the other zealots to tell them on his behalf, I thank you for your help. I felt the power of your prayers. Nevertheless, I am publicly announcing that I have decided to side with the monasteries. When word went out that Father Joseph the cave dweller had accepted the stance of the monasteries, some of the other zealots said, God has spoken. He speaks with God and received a revelation. He must be right because the grace of God comes to sanctified souls and informs them regarding the truth. God does not give revelations to just anybody. Other fanatical zealots, however, began ridiculing us. Oh, Father Joseph the cave dweller has fallen into delusion. One of them proclaimed an open war against us and eloquently said all kinds of things against us. Yerinda, however, never criticized him. Instead, he told us, We won't say a word. We will pay attention to our vigil and our prayer, and let them say whatever they want. May God forgive them. Years later, after Yerinda fell asleep in holiness, and we, his spiritual children, were the first ones to acquire large brotherhoods after those decades of decline on the holy mountain, that zealot was forced to admit, My, my, what monks! with so many virtuous disciples. Fathers, we must admit that Elder Joseph was right. 
It is not possible for a rotten root to produce such fruits. A tree is known by its fruit. Therefore we must have been wrong, and Elder Joseph must have been right. That eloquent father fell into error because when we are knowledgeable but lack humility, knowledge puffs us up. In other words, it makes us think that we know everything and that the others are wrong. But people who are enlightened by God don't make dogmatic mistakes. This is why monks have been the vanguard of Christianity, and this is why the Holy Fathers call monasticism the spine of the church. More Grace with the New Calendarists When we left the Zealots and joined the rest of the Athenite Fathers, we experienced the power of grace and the mysteries of the New Calendarists. Footnote. Even though all Athenite fathers kept the old calendar, the fathers who remained subject to the ecumenical patriarchate were considered new calendarists because the ecumenical patriarchate followed the new calendar. Yerinda told us that he saw grace filling the chapel during liturgy. Papa Ephrem of Katunakia explained what Yerinda meant as follows. Grace can be seen. When? When a person makes progress with the prayer when he is purified through tears, when God wants to reveal it to him and raise him higher. Then he sees grace just as others see things in front of them. I can't explain exactly, however, the manner in which one sees it. It is somewhat like a bright mist. When a person sees grace, he is in a state of tremendous peace and bliss. At such times, an indescribable peace reigns, and you think that this is all you would want to have in paradise. Although grace can be seen, it cannot be described because it is a feeling. Theology is not just words. It is also feeling. Someone else understands a description of grace only if he has experienced similar states. This is why when Yerinda told us that he saw grace filling the chapel, we didn't understand what he meant until we ourselves saw grace. When I served liturgy for Elder Joseph at the small skeet of St. Anne, I lived great states of grace. I would see the entire chapel flooded in grace. At such times, one beholds mysteries. Those states of grace are unforgettable. Papa Frem began to weep at this point when saying this. Elder Joseph beheld grace palpably during the liturgy, especially after we sided with the monasteries. I remember one time telling Father Procopios, let me wear your cowl when I serve liturgy so that it will become holy and protect you from temptations. Of course, I didn't mean that I am holy or that I would sanctify it. I simply saw that grace would be present and would bless everything in our liturgies. When we were still with the old calendarists and Papa Frem of Katunakia served liturgy, with the eyes of his soul he would see bugs or sometimes mouse droppings on the altar. After we sided with the monasteries, however, he stopped seeing these things. In our first liturgy after siding with the monasteries, we were all flooded with grace, tears, and peace. It wasn't just Yerinda or Papa Frem of Katunakia who served the liturgy, but everyone. Years later, Papa Ephrem of Katunakia told us, Believe me, after Yerinda sided with the monasteries, I saw him frequently in my sleep. Sometimes he would give me advice, and other times he would console me because I was going through tremendous temptations. But now that I have also sided with the monasteries, i.e. after 1975, footnote, out of obedience to his elder Nikiforos, Papa Ephraim remained with the zealots until his elders repose in 1975. He frequently tells me in my sleep, come and serve liturgy for me. As long as I was with the zealots, he never asked me in my sleep to come and serve liturgy for him. That made a big impression on me. Another revelation for us that the new calendarists had grace came a few years later, after Papa Haralambos was ordained. Papa Haralambos joined our brotherhood five months after we sided with the monasteries. In his own words, this is what happened. After siding with the monasteries, at first we did not commemorate the patriarch. After we moved to New Skeet, 
It was necessary one day to serve liturgy at St. Paul's Monastery, where it was definitely required to commemorate the patriarch. What do I do now? I asked Yaranda. Go and commemorate him, and when you return, tell me what you felt. I did as he said, and rarely have I received so much grace during the Divine Liturgy as I did at that time. The tears flowed like a river throughout the liturgy. I could barely say the petitions. When I returned back to Yerinda, he said, Surely you were flooded with grace. Yes, Yerinda, I said, and I told him what I had experienced. Do you see, my child, that you are not sinning by commemorating the patriarch, no matter what he said or did, since he has not been deposed? Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, of Elder Joseph the Hezekast, and all his holy spiritual children, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. Amen.